The biggest boss, Rick Ross, pulled up to Dolphins OTAs yesterday. And just like our guy Rick Ross, every day we're hustling here on Dolphins today. So go down and subscribe right now. We're keeping it real for you Dolphins fans out there. Dolphins Today is presented by Aura, a all-in-one digital safety company. You can start your 14-day free trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. With that, we get into today's show. I am Will Scott. Welcome into Dolphins Today. We're going to be breaking down winners and losers from this week at OTAs. First two weeks of OTAs, I gave you my takeaways for week three, we're going to be getting into our winners and losers. Our first winner, the boss, Rick Ross. Look at my guy with Tyree Kill yesterday at OTAs. Also, the GOAT with the GOAT, Rick Ross and Dan Marino. Shout out to Rick Ross, huge Dolphins fan. I'm sure he watches Dolphins today. Appreciate him pulling up to Miami Gardens yesterday for OTAs. And the Miami Dolphins official Twitter account posted a video with him at OTAs, and this was one of the responses. They could use Rick Ross at center, says at says at Helmetson. So pick a center right now. Type the boss for Rick Ross or type CW for Connor Williams. Pick a center for Miami. Hey, maybe Rick Ross was at Miami Gardens for a tryout. You never know. The team desperately needs a center. Connor Williams can't snap the football. Maybe Rick Ross is going to be under center for the Fins in 2022. Our next winner is Duke Riley, and Duke has been putting on a show the entire offseason. Here is what the Miami Herald said about his performance this week at OTAs. After Tyndall was drafted, Riley was a player who was assumed to be pushed closer to the roster bubble. However, Riley, who was re-signed to the team on a one-year $3 million deal, has begun to stake his claim to remain a part of the defense this upcoming season. He was extremely vocal during team drills, getting teammates lined up and using his speed to make a difference. He capped off a productive spring by, reg by registering an interception on quarterback Tua Tungavailoa on Tuesday that likely would have been returned for a touchdown. So there you have it, Duke Riley with a pick six off of Tua at practice on Tuesday. He re-signed with the Finns on a one-year $3 million deal in March. And like the Miami Herald said after drafting Channing Tindall, Duke Riley wasn't really even a lock to make this team but I think that he will make the team. He's making certainly a big impact at OTAs, and he did at minicamp as well. And he just plays with so much juice, and that's why I really like Riley. It doesn't matter that you know maybe he's a little bit undersized, but he's going to go out and he's going to play with a lot of heart each and every single practice, each and every single game. I want him on this team, and I want him making an impact on this team, getting some playing time. Do you think Duke Riley will start for Miami this year? Yeah, I said that. Do you think he's going to start for Miami at any point this year? Type Y for yes or type N for no down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Our next winner is Raekwon Davis. This is a really big year for Raekwon. We've talked about Tua, kind of a make or break year for him. I kind of feel the same way about Davis. He was the practice player of the day the other day wearing the orange jersey. And so not only do you get to rep the orange uni if you're the practice player of the day, you also get to run the music the entire practice. So we have the playlist right here. Here are six songs that Raekwon played at practice. Dixieland Delight, The Payback, by James Brown, Sweet Home Alabama. No surprise, he played for the Crimson Tide. Many Men by 50 Cent. Love and Happiness, Al Green, if it ain't got you, Alicia Keys. No Rick Ross on there. Come on, Raekwon. What's your favorite song on Raekwon's playlist? Let me know. It's got to be Sweet Home Alabama for me. It's a classic. You can't go wrong with it. But Raekwon got some good reviews on his music by the media the other day at practice. I think Raekwon is in for a big year. In his rookie season in 2020, he looked absolutely outstanding. However, he was ranked toward the bottom in terms of nose tackles by PFF last season. So he's really got to step up this year, especially considering the lack of depth at that position for Miami. 
You can start your 14-day free trial at Aura.com slash chatsports. Here's what Aura is going to do for you. They're going to provide financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online and device security. They also have family plans that can protect up to five people. 14-day free trial, great deal we're giving you here at Chat Sports. You can start it at Aura.com slash Chat Sports. And even if you think, yeah, I'm not really worried about hackers, you need to worry about your parents maybe getting hacked. They might not be as smart online. That's where the family plan comes into play. Up to five people that you can get on your family plan. Again, 14-day free trial, Aura.com slash Chat Sports. That link is going to be in the comments and the description of this video. That brings us to our next winner of OTA's Week 3. That would be Tyreek Hill. And Tyreek kept saying, I want the orange jersey. I want to be the practice player of the day. Well, there you have it. Tyreek Hill finally wearing the orange practice jersey. And as I've said, we got an orange jersey tracker that we're keeping you up to date with here on Dolphins today. Here are all the players that have been the practice player of the day Thus far throughout the offseason, Tyree Kill was named practice player of the day June 2nd. He wore the orange practice the next practice. Raekwon Davis, River Craycraft, the two latest to rep the orange uniform. Here's what Dolphins GM Chris Greer said about Tyreek. He does something on the field every day that has you shaking your head. Everyone knows the speed and what he does. A phenomenal athlete. Multiple people in Kansas City told me, just wait until you watch him in practice and watch the things he does. That's what gets you excited. Thanks for trading him, Chiefs. His love and passion for how he plays, it's really impressive watching him work. That's been a catalyst. Jalen Waddell already has been a very good practice player for us. Cedric Wilson as well. The whole group being around him with his energy, work ethic, has elevated the expectations. It seeps through to all facets of the team. And that's what we've heard about Tyreek. You know, after signing that massive contract that made him the highest paid receiver in the league, he could have just sat back, relaxed, and, you know, did his thing. He is already stepping up and being a leader on this offense before he even takes a snap in September. Really, really impressive. Tyreek already making a huge leadership impact on this team. Talking about a younger guy now, that's a Quandre White. Someone who was an undrafted free agent, one of the fan favorites already on this team, the impact that he's been making at minicamp and at OTAs. He is really impressed. This coaching staff has nothing but great things to say about Zaquan Dre. And uh, to be honest, I'm pleasantly surprised the things that I'm hearing about White because he wasn't even the primary running back last season at South Carolina. Here's what Mike McDaniel said about him. I've been very impressed. I call him Dr. White. That's what you love to see. Mike McDaniel already giving Zaquandre a nickname. Here's what he did last season in South Carolina. Stats don't really jump off the book. Just two touchdowns, 583 yards. But really what stands out is the yards per carry. 6.6 in the SEC. Toughest conference in all of college football. I hope to see Zaquandre really develop into a goal line back in the National Football League. Do you think he's going to make the team? Type M for he makes it or type P if he's on the practice squad. Go down. I know a lot of y'all are big Zaquandre fans. I'm certainly rooting for him. I'm going to type P for practice squad, though. Another guy that might be a long shot to make the team, that is Cody Core, someone who we haven't talked a whole lot about, but he's been making an impact at OTAs this week, caught deep passes from Tua and Teddy Bridgewater. The one from Tua went for a touchdown. He's, he's really showcasing his speed. He's showcasing his ability to get down the field. But like I said, he's a long shot to make this team because of the depth the Dolphins have at wide receiver. When I was doing my roster projection video the other week, I didn't even consider Cody Core for a man for a spot on the 53-man roster, but he's turned in a very good OTAs this week, so maybe if he can go out in the preseason, make an impact in preseason games, he'll have a chance to make this team. Now getting into my OTAs losers. You probably did not expect to see Matt Moore on this list, but here is why Matt Moore is on the list. Tyreek Hill just bodied this guy. So Tyreek was asked, are you worried about Tua? He said, I just want people to understand. I went for 150 with Matt Moore as my quarterback. 
if you don't remember that game against Minnesota, 150 and a touchdown with Matt Moore as my quarterback, and Tua is 10 times Matt Moore. You know, what did Matt Moore do, man? Here we are calling him a loser of Dolphins OTAs when he has no affiliation with this football team. So sorry, Matt Moore, but you are clearly the number one loser from this week at OTAs. Getting into our next loser, that is Channing Tindall. And Channing Tindall hasn't done anything bad, but he's a loser because Duke Riley is a winner. And Channing Tindall, when they drafted him, I thought had an outside chance to maybe start week one if he could turn in some really good uh, practices and eventually play well in preseason games. But Duke Riley has been just balling out, which means that that's really going to hurt Channing Tindall's chances of having a significant impact in year one. They both play the inside linebacker position. They're both gunning for a Landon Roberts job. Right now, I would give the slight edge to Duke Riley to be the number two behind a Landon Roberts. In fact, the Miami Herald says that Channing Tindall might be number three on the depth chart. Now getting into our next loser, that would be the offensive line. The offensive line has struggled. We talked about last week how the defense had four would-be sacks in a practice. Yeah, that's great from the defense. That's not good for the offensive line. Barry Jackson reported the other day when he was at practice that Tua was under constant pressure. So Tua under a lot of pressure to recent practice. Now, keep in mind, Teron Armstead coming off of a minor knee surgery. It's not going to impact his chances of playing week one. He's going to be fine, but he has not been out there at practice, which has been hurting the offensive line, I think. They're a loser from OTAs, which brings me to our next loser, to a tongue of Iloa. Don't panic. It's okay. He was a winner from minicamp. He was outstanding the first two weeks of OTAs. He just did not have his best week this week, according to what I read. He threw a pick six on Tuesday to Duke Riley. It was a terrible throw. It's okay. You know, it's just, he didn't have his best stuff. It's kind of hard to come up with losers in these type of videos because we certainly hear more positive things. Omar Kelly, though, not very positive on what he saw at OTAs this week. The passing game isn't where it needs to be. Based on what I've seen so far, says Omar Kelly of the Sun Sentinel. Now take that with a grain of salt because Omar is certainly critical of all things Dolphins. Now get in the comments. Let me know your confidence level in Tua. Scale it 1 to 10. How confident are you that Tua is going to go out there and ball out this year? Appreciate you watching Dolphins today. Appreciate you all subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, go down, hit that big red sub button. Also, my DMs are open. If you want to talk fins, hit me up at WillScott44. As always, go Dolphins.